Hey everybody, it's Will. Today, we'll be diving into an emerging concept that has gained popularity in the last few years. Of course, I'm talking about data fabric. In this video, we will demonstrate how creating a data fabric in Appian is the perfect solution for organizations to discover, unify, secure, and optimize their enterprise data. Now follow along with this tutorial in your own Appian environments by creating an Appian Community Edition site. You can also continue your learning by checking out additional courses and tutorials on academy.appian.com. Organizations have rapidly collected data across a wider range of sources and systems. Customer data in CRMs, supply chain data in ERPs, and other business data located throughout the organizations. And the problem is that IT leaders are lost in disconnected systems, inefficient processes, and poorly connected data silos. While business leaders need data at their fingertips to make data-driven decisions and ensure optimal efficiency. Data Fabric enables frictionless access and sharing of data in a distributed data environment. What it does, it enables a single and consistent data management framework, which allows seamless data access and processing by design across otherwise siloed storage. Let's talk about data warehousing and data lakes. Data warehouse and data lake systems perform a similar function, but for analytical processing of data. They collect data from multiple sources and consolidate them into a single system for analysis. These systems present a hurdle as many businesses are not able to or are comfortable with moving all their data into a single system. So data fabrics are a different approach. They connect instead of collect. They unify data across systems into a new virtual data model. Appian's data fabric is designed to support both analytical processing as well as living and transactional applications. It powers active applications where users are both viewing and changing the data across the data fabric and viewing that data in real time. Now let's talk about Appian's data fabric. Appian's data fabric unifies data from multiple systems to enable secure and easy access to enterprise data. This dramatically reduces the time required to deliver new applications, simplifies system integrations, and empowers more users to build new digital solutions with enterprise data securely. By using Appian, developers can combine data management, integration, automation, and low-code development tools to build impactful and data-rich digital solutions. Development teams leveraging Appian's data fabric report that they've been able to eliminate complex database tuning, speed up application developments, and remove the need for advanced technical expertise. So in this video, we're going to see how Appian's data fabric first uses codeless data modeling to discover and model enterprise data. It also relates data across multiple systems into a unified model. It also enables unique security controls to govern data with role level security. And it auto optimizes data to reduce data management and ensure applications are always performance. So let's jump into the use case and what we're going to be implementing here. So let's take some creative uh, liberty here and let's consider that now we are working in or for a shop which is called uh, Little Pizzeria, right? So it's it's a pizza shop and it's been very par very successful in the past you know uh, month. And so now they want to expand internationally. Problem is that it's a bit difficult to expand internationally, right? So they want to have an application to open new stores and they want to have this application to manage and track the opening of those stores, right? So that's going to be the 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 main use case that we have. You know, we'll add on more use cases as we go, but for now we just want to be able to do that. So the phase one to create this application is to, to do a what we call a CRUD, C-R-U-D, create, read, update, delete stores. And the one caveat is that stores need to be attached to a country, right? It can't just be a store which is just created, right? So we're going to be creating everything from scratch where we have the ability to create, read, update, and delete stores. Very simple use case, very simple. And we're going to be creating some user stories on that. But let's first discover the kind of planning piece of that application. So this is the very simple entity relationship diagram. We got a store here, a country, and we have a made to one relationship. So each country can have multiple stores. Pretty obvious, right? So here we're going to be able to have those following data points. The store will have an ID, a name, a manager, and a country ID. The country will just have an ID and a name, and that's it. Now, what this will mean is that we'll actually be creating record types on top of those entities, right? So the store here will have a record type, and the country here will also have a record type. So we'll have two record types that we need to create. Now, the thing is that 
We could be creating two record types based on the database table. That would be fine. But that would mean that we need to manage ourselves, the country uh, and the list of countries, which is okay. But you know, ideally, we'd want to stay away from needing to manage the list of countries. If you know countries, I mean, countries don't change every day. But if there is a change of currency, of, of name, we don't really want to be hassled with this. So what we're going to do is connect to a public API, which is free of charge. And that gives us a list of countries uh, to choose from and to basically have the updated list of countries. So that's a pretty cool thing to do. And we're going to see that with Data Fabric and all the features that we have in, in Appian, this will be super easy to do, to create those two record types and basically have uh, a way to connect those two record types. So to sum up here, what this means is that the record type store will be on a database table, the record type country will be on an API. Now, before all the features that we would see here in this tutorial, what you would have to do is basically to collect the data, right? So in the country, you might have to do to create a process to copy paste and have a database table there so that you can create a view, uh, you know, based on uh, that connects the store and the country. That's okay, but you know, it, it takes a lot of development, not ideal. And you'll see that in this video, we're gonna be seeing all the ways that it makes, you know, Data Fabric makes it so, so much easier here. So let's just sum up what we have to do. User stories here is A, view the list of stores. That's gonna be something that we need to be able to do and B, add a new store. And each store needs to be attached to a country. So you know we'll have to make sure that this works. Um, and to do all of this, we've defined some subtasks. So similarly to how you would do in a project, you want to define the steps to get to where you want to go. We've done this here and let me run you through all those subtasks of implementation. First one, we're going to create the application. That's pretty uh, straightforward. Second, we're going to create the store record type. You know, very simple. We're going to be creating record type based on the database table. And you'll see that we don't even have to create the table or use any CDTs. Appian will create the table for us. And that's going to be super awesome. Create the site just to be able to view what the end user will experience. That's important to do pretty early on as well. Create the country's record type create the relationship between the two, generate the new store record action. So you know, we'll be able to create and add new stores, modify the interface, test the process model. And you know, at this stage, we'll basically be able to uh, just make sure that we modify the record list so that we can have the name of the country displayed rather than just its ID. Okay, so that's the, per that's the goal of all of our um, Implementation here, we're gonna follow those steps. The timestamps will be down there below, so feel free to follow them and chug along. Uh, this is will be done on the Appian Community Edition. So this is my Community Edition here. If you don't have it, the way you can get a Community Edition is to go on Appian Community, and of course you need to have a user account here, learn my learning journey, all right? And then you can re request it here, okay? so. If you don't have it already, just make sure that you go in and, and request your uh, community edition so you can follow along this video. Okay, all right. Let's get right into it. And I'm gonna go into the designer of my application. We're gonna start with the step number one. Let me just go back here, creates the application. So let me create the new application here. I'm gonna call it Applied Data Fabric uh, just for the sake of this Pearl and contains all of our uh, data points for the applied, all of our objects for the applied data fabric pearl. Okay, I'm going to use a lot of the uh, auto generations here, generate groups and folders uh, because you know for the sake of time. So feel free to do that as well. Um, we're going to be using a lot of the defaults here. All right, so here I land into my explore uh, view. So now that I've created my application, now I'm gonna to need to create the store record type. So let's go back to what we have here uh, in the planning. We have the store with an ID, the name, the manager, and the country ID. So this will be on a table here. Now, you know, I could create the table in SQL and directly the cloud database, but I'm not gonna do that. What I want to do is make sure that I have that I use basically the latest features and Appian will create for me the record type and the database table for me, which is awesome. You should leverage this. Let's go into my Explorer view. We're gonna go into the record types here. 
new record types. And I'm gonna create a store record type here, which will be in plural name stores, uh, all the stores of little area. There we go, create. Now again, I'm using all the defaults here. I'm gonna, this is gonna open my record type here. And what I need to do just here is to define the structure of the data. So I'm gonna say, tell us about your data. And here, maybe if you've seen a couple of those different uh, versions of the interface, we now have this option to start from scratch. The new data model that we see here, database tables will be auto-generated and data will be synced, which is what we want to do, right? So this whole sync concept uh, is the fundamentals and the foundation of Data Fabric. By syncing your data, you'll be able to leverage all of the features that Appian has to offer uh, related to Data Fabric. So I'm gonna click new. Uh, next, sorry, I'm gonna be able to choose the data source here. I only have one data source, so that's okay. And I'm gonna hit next here. And now I can define the structure of my data. So here, what I'll do is I'll simplify a bit and I'll just go back to my ERD here. I need a name, a manager, and a country ID. So what I can do is uh, let's say that I'm gonna remove modified by, modified on, just to keep it a bit simple. I can see that I have a name here, so I can use the commonly used fields at the top there on the right. So this is recommendation that you can have. So I'm gonna hit name here. Uh, and then I can see here that I have an assignee field, which I'm gonna hit here and I'm gonna rename to be manager because that's a user we want to have, which is gonna be a user. I'm gonna hit and say, this is a manager. And let's see what we have left, country ID, which we'll need to do as well. So the country ID here is gonna be interesting because it's not gonna be a, just an ID, a simple ID. It's gonna be actually um, a three letter code. So you'll see that countries can be defined in multiple ways. For example, the top level domain of, you know, um, .co.uk, um, .ml for the Netherlands, well, it's going to be the same thing here. The only thing is that we're going to be having a three-letter code here. Let's add multiple fields. And I'm going to add just one here, which will allow me to have the country ID. I'm going to call it like here, text. And just to summarize this, I'm just going to call this store ID for the primary key. So we have a primary key, number, integer, that's all good. Uh, created by, created on name, manager, and country ID, which is text. Only reason that I'm putting store ID here is just for the sake of clarity of what ID it is. Um, you know, that's one of the practices that you can follow. All right, so hit next here. We don't have any relationship to declare for now, so I'm gonna hit next. And this is the, the recap that we have. So this is store ID, created by, created on, name, manager, country ID. It asks me, do I want to create the table? And yes, for sure, we want that. If you want, you can preview the database scripts to see what will be run on the table. Um, we're gonna save the changes and can trust Appian to run the script for us. Save the changes. I can now download the database scripts if I want to. That's you know, more for me to be able to uh, run the database scripts in you know, later um, environments, staging, production, et cetera. I can finish here and that will automatically store my script. All right, so now we have our record type. Now, if I want to make sure that I have my record type, I can always go here on the record list and I'll see that I've got uh, a list. Uh, no items available for now, but that's okay. At least I have a list. All right, so now let's go to my list of steps here. So we have we have created the store record type. Now we want to create the site just to be able to access the record type without going to tempo, which is okay, but you know, it's not ideal. So I can create a site here. I'm going back into my Explorer view. I can create a site here with my new button. And we're gonna be calling this uh, store, um, store tracker, let's call it. Play name is gonna be stores, Tracker is sites to track the opening of our stores. Okay, create the site here. Again, I'm using a lot of the defaults. And I'm gonna add one page 
to be able to have our list of stores. There we go. So just titling it stores, icon, we can find an icon, which is pretty cool. Maybe we have a store one, there we go. And the type will be a record list. And that's gonna be our uh, ADF store. Okay, so, you know, we can do some uh, tweaking in terms of branding and stuff, but we just want to save the changes here just to have something good. I can then look at my web address here to click on my web address to have the, to view the list. And right now we'd have no stores, uh, you know, registered. That's okay. We'll be able to do that later on. Okay, so going back to my, our steps here. So if we created the site, we're going really fast. That's awesome. Now we're getting into the interesting bit, which is the country's record type. Now the country's record type here is going to be a bit different than just creating the table uh, with our record type or store record type. What we're going to need to do is basically to use a public API. So here we have a what is called a REST countries API, which gives us a list of all up-to-date uh, countries. Now, the link to this API will be in the description below, so don't worry about it. But essentially, we have a couple of different things we can do with this API. What we can do is have all of our countries. We can also find countries by name, by code, by currency. For us, we just want to have all the countries, right? We want to be able to choose through all the different countries. So here we have what we call uh, an endpoint. And if I copy this and just open this in any kind of browser, I can see that I've got this not super readable um, you know, text file. And this is a JSON format. So we're not gonna to dive too much into JSON formats. Um, you know, we'll probably do a couple of other videos on how JSON is consumed by Appian, but essentially here is, this is the formats that different systems can talk to each other with, right? So we'll need a way to actually take this and have all of our countries be stored in Appian essentially, all right? So let's kind of just go over the flow here of what we're gonna be able to, to be doing here in our, in our system. So what we'll do in our setup is imagine that we have, let me zoom in a bit. We have our REST countries API. So that's, that gives us a JSON format right here, okay? Now, the way I need to get to my record type, so imagine here we have our countries record type, There's a couple of different steps we need to have from the rest countries to the country's record type. One of the things that we need to do is to define a connected system. Now a connected system will hold the information about that system that we're connecting to. So essentially here, we're gonna have something like this, where we have a connection between the rest countries and the connected system. Then we're gonna have an integration rule which essentially does one job and is to get, we can run the integration rule to get the list of countries. So that integration rule will be called something like get all countries. That will be the, probably the name of our integration rule. And the last thing that we need to do is to define a step in between, which is to format the data. So here we'll have what we call a record data source. So what this does here is that we can actually connect and have our API connect to an integration rule and then connect to a record data source and that will give the data to our country's record type, all right? So that's kind of the step that we need to do from right to left here is to define a connected system. So that will be step one. Then we'll have to define the integration rule then we'll have to define the record data source. And then, you know, as a result, as an outcome, we'll have a country's record type. And what you'll see is that this happens with what we call data sync. So the idea here is that the country's record type will have the set of the data persisted on the data server of Appian. So the idea here is that we don't, every time we try to have the list of all the countries, we don't call the, the, the API, we call it once, maybe every day, for example, and then that's it. We can have the data in Appian available for us, okay? So let's go through those steps. <clears throat> Connected system, integration rule, record data source, and then the record type, all right? 
So let's go for the creation of, I'm gonna close a couple of tabs here. I'm gonna go into my build to have the list of objects here. So let's go for, oops, about that. Let's go for my new connected system. And I'm gonna go for HTTP because that's what we need to do here, HTTP. Now this is gonna be called, for example, something like rest country, right? So you can change the name all, you know, as much as you want, but we're gonna call it rest countries here because that's the name of the API. Public API to get information about all countries. You get free information about countries. All right, so the base URL will be the URL that is common to all the different endpoints, right? So if you, if you can look here at all the different endpoints here, we've got this common root, which can be used. So I'm gonna copy this here, my, this, uh, this root here, and I'm gonna pop it into my connected system. So that will be our base URL. Now in our use case, we're gonna be using just one uh, endpoint, which will be to get all the countries, but you can imagine that if you have different endpoints, like get country by name, get country by code, that would be interesting to have as an endpoint. There's no authentication because you know it's a free public API, so that's fine. And now I'm gonna be able to do, go ahead and use a new integration directly. So I can have this button here, use a new integration, then I'm gonna click here. So that's just to remind you, this is the first step here, done. Connected system, I have my connected system. Now I need to go for get all countries and create my integration rule. Okay, so I'm gonna save here, just to use a lot of the defaults. And I'm gonna call this here, gets all countries, the returns, all countries from the rest countries API. Okay, create. But just to give you kind of the rundown here on the left, we're gonna be able to configure our integration. Here, we're gonna be able to actually test it out. So we're gonna be able to see the output of that integration rule. But what we just need to do here is just to add and define our endpoints, which will be all here. So we're gonna be able to do and say, okay, my relative path and what I want to get from this endpoint is all of the countries. So I'm gonna simply add on my integration, all. Now already this is working, right? Because this is the, the URL which will be used in the integration will be that. If I test a request, I can see that I'm gonna have a result. Now it says success, and I can see that I'm getting you know, some structured data, but then it's kind of this, again, this JSON format, which is not super structured. So what I can do is an app in lets me know that this is possible. You can convert the JSON to an app in value, which is super helpful, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, all right, convert JSON to app in value. If I test a request again, what you'll see is that I'm gonna get a structured data. So here I can see that I've got a body with 250 items. That's the number of countries that we have, 250 items here. And then I can see that every country is structured the same way. So we've got a name, we've got a you know common official name, we've got native name, we've got um, that three letter code that I was telling you about, so CCA3. Uh, we've got the independent status, uh, you know, the capital a lot of data points that we're not gonna use all of it, but at least it's there if we want to. Okay, so I'm getting all this data here, which is great. Now, just so you know, the, the way you can turn on the JSON conversion is going into response here and saying convert JSON to app in value. So that's already usable in a way, this uh, integration. So I'm gonna save the changes. Now I'm gonna be able to go and create uh, the, the rest of the pipeline, which is record data source and country's record type. Now I'm not gonna create the record data source on its own for now. I'm gonna be able to create the record type first and then you know, by creating the record type, I'll create also the uh, record data source. Okay, so new record type countries, list of all countries from the uh, rest countries API. Okay, so create. Again, using a lot of the default here. The so same steps here, I'm gonna be able to go in and tell us about your data, click on this one. And then here I have a choice and what I'm gonna use is web service because that's you know what it's gonna be using 
uh, in this case here. So web service, click next. I'm going to use sync because that's, you know, a, an essential part of implementing data fabric. Again, the idea here is that you want to connect to a system which is not belonging into your organization, right? So that's REST countries API is just like if it was a Salesforce uh, system, an SAP system, an ERP system, and also not a CRM. What we want to have is be able to do connections. And so going back to our little diagram here from the data fabric is we we want to do something like this, right? So the the Salesforce or our REST countries is 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 this. I want to connect it to the rest of all of our data points. So we'll do that by using um, sync, data sync. Let me go back to our steps here. Create the country's record type, all good. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with using sync here. I'm gonna click next. And here, this is where it, it's asking me for a record data source. Now the record data source is that tiny expression rule that formats the data, but I don't want to create it on my own. I'm gonna use this option to create a record data source. Later on, when you have experience with this, you can completely use um, you know, a record data source that you create yourself. For now, what we need to do is just uh, use what will be generated automatically and don't worry, we'll dissect it. We might, we'll need to change it anyway, right? So we're gonna see what Appian gives us. So here I have an option. I can create a new integration or use an existing integration. That's great, I already have my existing integration because that's this one. So I'm gonna use ADF get all countries. Okay, next. Now this is gonna be creating this record data source. I can, if I want to just change that, uh, I'm just gonna rename it countries record data source. The rest is fine. I'm gonna create next. Now this option here is asking you if you want to sync in batches and that is relevant if you have more than a thousand records per call but we only have 250 countries it's already a lot but there's only 250 countries so that doesn't apply to us so what we can do is basically say we don't need to sync in batches we'll just do it in one batch we'll get all the countries and get it into our record type creates now here, this is where I can access my objects that were either created or that are used in that pipeline. So if you look here, we have our record data source. That's going back to here. This is our step here. And we have, oops, sorry, we have get all countries, which is our integration rule, which is step two here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just modify, do a couple of things on the record data source that I need to do. So click on here. And actually, let me show you what it will give here if I click on OK, because that doesn't break it necessarily. I just want to show you. Here, there is an error that we have. And the problem is that it's coming from the structure of the data coming from the REST countries API, right? So essentially, what we have here is that we have structured, you know, dictionaries of dictionaries of dictionaries, and, and that's OK, but it's really hard to read in a structured way, right? So if you if you have a a structured um, you know, database that you want to use, you can't really inject that. This would be more NoSQL and you know, that is not our use case here. What we want to really have is just going back to our uh, setup here is just to have ID and name. So we don't want to have this, this structured data set, um, which is not ideal. We want to actually maybe flatten and only get what we need from that. What we just need from that is just the name so here in this example, Mauritania, and the ID, which is our CCA3, um, which we'll use because it's an alphanumeric. Um, I think that's, that's what it's called for. And three letters to define our country. So we just need two fields. We don't need all that, you know, all those fields. So we're going to need to actually define uh, that structure. So what we'll need to do just to show you, essentially what we have here is the outcome of our integration is looking like this. So we have a list of dictionaries. So I have a dictionary one, which is corresponding to one country. And then I've got name, which is another dictionary. And then I have the common name, which is the name of the common name, right? And then I also have ID here. That's okay, but you know, that is not readable by Appian in any capacity. And what we have is that we just don't have just one, we have multiple of those. You know, we have one dictionary uh, per country here. So let me just do that. So we have, this is the outcome that we have from our integration. 
which is okay, not ideal. We need to modify it. What we need to get is essentially something similar, but simplified. First of all, we're going to remove all of the stuff that we don't need. And what we need is essentially a set of dictionaries or maps, you know, both work with just the name. So basically what we have is we're going to have the common name here. And that will not be structured. So we'll have just common name and ID. Same thing here. We're going to remove that second layer and those nested layers. We're just going to go for that. We just need to do that. So we need to do a bit of a manipulation of the data. And also I didn't put all of the data that we don't need here, but you know, there's also a lot of data we don't need that we just need to simplify. So that's the, well, actually, I guess that's, this is what we need for the record data source. That's the output that it needs to do. And so to do that, we're gonna use our good old friend, a bank for each to iterate through all the dictionaries and just get the common name and the ID. All right, so going to my, inter my record data source. So this is opened here. I can open it by clicking on my record data source here and I can verify what it gives us. If I test the rule here, is gonna give us, as I was saying, a list of dictionaries. And that's fine, but we don't need all of that and we need to make it simpler. So I'm gonna to need to modify a couple of things. So this record data source does a lot of things. It handles actually even uh, some exception handling, some error handling that you can see here. I'm not gonna to go too deep in this. I just want to look at the important piece here, which is the happy path, which is providing us the body. So what I need to do here is not just return the body as it is, the result, the, the, the body of the, of the integration rule. I need to modify it a bit. What I'll do is I'll just cut this line here. I'm going to cut. And I'm going to, I'm going to put in a for each. And that's going to be my uh, items of my for each. So basically what I need to do is iterate through the body to go through and look and only get what I need to get. Here, I'm going to be able to do a map or a dictionary would be fine, but map is a, you know, map uh, gives you a function that is, you know, pretty cool to use. So you can use that. And I'm going to be able to put a uh, country ID here as the parameter. And what I need to do is basically to get per, for each of those dictionaries, I need to get back the CCA3. Let me go ahead and do every big item. That's CCA3. Then what I need to do as well is to get the uh, common name here. So I should always be getting the name. Uh, what I can do is do, you know, just to show you a different way to index uh, the data, we can do an index function. And what I'm going to do is say common name will be indexed. I need the name and then I need the common uh, of that, of that name. So I'm going to, I can do two index functions here. And basically what I can do is say bank item and that would be, we need to index first in name. And then here, I need to index in common. So this is two ways of indexing. Um, this index function gives you some more flexibility in terms of saying, what if the value doesn't exist? Uh, what if there's no name on the country? You know, that's gonna not return you an error. If, if that's the case with the index function, you can define a default that you know, would be basically what happens um, if, that doesn't, if the index function doesn't find that uh, property. So that's you know, one way to do it. Um, if you know that you will always have those data points and those properties, that's also fine to use just a dot. Uh, it's a bit more readable, but for now that's fine. Okay, so now I'm just testing this out and I can test this out. I'm just gonna go ahead here and click on test rule. And I can see here that I have country ID, common name, and that's great. So you see that I've got a bunch of those. So I'm gonna save the changes here with just those small changes. And if I want to, I can also add, if later on I wanna add more fields, uh, I don't know, like currency or status, that, that's also possible. So save the changes here. Now I'm sa I've saved my expression rule, my record data source. I can now refresh and I should be able to get country ID and common name. It's great. So I'm click on next here and that's pretty much almost done. I just need to define what is my primary key, which is here in my case, my country ID. 
My record field names are good. My record field types are good. Their text, it's all good. Finish. And now I can save the changes. Now, as I'm saving the changes, you'll see that there is this little wheel on the bottom left here that is turning on. This is the sync history. And I can see that as I was saving the record type here, I have synced 250 rows. So that means that in my data server, in my record type, there is 250 of those rows. Uh, and I've got you know, 250 countries that I can use from. So that's creating the, rec the country's record type. That was going to be the piece which is the most complex here because we're talking about integration rules. We've created now this whole pipeline, countries, well, actually going from rest countries to countries record type. Okay, so now let's go and look at the steps. Now we can create the relationship between the two because we have countries, we have doors, now we need to just connect them both. So I can, stop, I can start with any of them uh, and I'm going to create a uh, relationship here in my store record type by clicking here on add relationship. Now I can choose and look for the right record type. This will be the countries one here. Choose the right one, ADF countries. Click on next. Now this is asking me, what do I want to do in terms of setup of uh, structure and, and, and relationship? Here I'm gonna be able to actually you know, define um, the name of the relationship, uh, which you can change later on, so it's not super big deal. What we recommend usually is to keep it simple. So, you know, if you have a store, it has a country, so you can do basically store.country and get the name. Now, this here is important to define because right now, by default, it tells us it's a one-to-many relationship, which means that a store would have multiple countries, which is not the case. It's the opposite. It's the other way around. So what I want to do is this one here, made to one, one store, well, one country can have multiple stores, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and define the fields. And the good thing about this relationship defined de definition of relationship here is that you can't really go wrong because the fields, you know, this section of fields will only give you the, the, the right fields. So here I can say that this is the country ID on my store mapped to my country ID. Very pretty straightforward. I can click add here. And now I can save the changes and now I can see the, the structure of the data fabric as we're mentioning that is starting to build here, right? So this is a very simple use case, but you can imagine having a lot, a lot of those different uh, relationships that you have between different record types. And that's really data fabric being shown to you in real time. Now I want to do the same thing for my countries uh, in the data model here. Uh, basically, if I refresh my countries here, data model, I'm gonna have this succession relationship which says, hey, the other record type is connecting to countries. Do you want to do the same thing? And you know, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna add this one here. And if I want to, I can rename the relationship as well uh, to say it's just the stores. And I guess because it's multiple stores, I can do stores with an S here because one country will have multiple stores. Okay, save the changes here. Now we have created the two relationship between uh, our record our country's record type and our store. Now we want to generate the new store record action. And this is another one of those awesome features from for the record types, which is to be able to generate uh, a new uh, a record action to, to add a new uh, item in the record uh, type, the record list. So what I'm gonna do is on my store record type, I'm gonna go into record actions here, and I'm gonna hit generate a record action. Here, this is super straightforward. I just need to be walked through the generation of the, of, of the action, which in my case here, I want to create a record. So I want to create a store, which I'm gonna like this one, but you can see that you can have update or delete. Click next. I can choose the display name. I can stay, I can stick with this. New store is pretty good. Action to create a new store. And I can have an icon, which a plus sign is generally really good. So I can just hit next and that is fine. Now what this tells me here is that it tells me that the workflow, what the objects will be created and reused. So here I can see that I've got three new objects which will be created and four existing objects that will be reused. So what will be created is an interface to be able to input the details of the store, a process model, and then a create store display name which is useful for the process model. It's also gonna be reusing 
groups and folders. So I don't need to change that necessarily. Uh, I could change and say that I want to reuse some of the objects, but for now, I just need to hit and continue generate action. Okay, so that's going to take a couple of seconds here. It tells me that it's all successful, so I can close. And now I can save the changes. And if I want to, I can go and look at my site. So if I just refresh here, I should be able to see my store, source tracker site. And here I can see that I have my new store record action to add a new store. So let me just take a look at what it does. Uh, that's, we can see that this was created, that it created a lot of the fields. Uh, some of them we don't need, and we might need to change that. Uh, you know, we might not want to keep that uh, as it is here because we have a created by, created on, maybe this needs to be automatic. So we'll need to just change a couple of things here. Uh, Manager is gonna be maybe also well a user picker rather than just a text field. So for now, we're gonna focus on just the name and the country. That's gonna be fine, name of the store and of the, and the country. Uh, I could do want to see here that I can actually choose and basically select uh, a country. So if I look for France, for example, that's gonna give me the list of the countries that start with FR. Now, the problem here is that I can see that this is the code, which is not super telling, right? So there is something that we need to change here because we don't want to just have the code show up. We want to have the full name of the country show up. To do that, when you have what we call here a record picker, which is what was you know, generated by default, we'll, we'll be able to actually change the, um, what is displayed instead of the code to be just the name of the country. So for now, let me just close this here and I'm gonna go into my interface, into my list of objects and go on create store to be able to modify a couple of things. Okay, so let's go here. I'm gonna remove created by so I can remove this field here. I'm gonna remove created on. And because we don't have a lot of data points, uh, I'm actually gonna remove the manager here. We don't need this for now. I'm gonna be able to actually keep this pretty tidy and to be in one column. So I can remove this column and actually I can even re remove that field to be just at the form layout. And the form layout, and you'll see that we're actually gonna be choosing to have a small pop-up so that we don't have something super wide, but just have a small pop-up which we can do as well with our record actions. So now I can actually remove my columns layouts. That in a way there's just two fields on a form layout, name and country. Now. What I want to make sure of is that name and country are, are required. So I can open the, the field here and make sure that this is required. Same thing for country here, required. Okay, so I can test this out. So test and let me look for USA. There we go. So I can choose, you know, this is pretty, pretty cool because I can choose just one country and I can select it. The only problem is that we don't have the rights name for that. So the way you can change that to just have you know the full name of the country, this happens in the record type specifically. So in our case here for record picker, we're, we're having a record picker on the country's record type. So we need to just go in here and look for views and header. And here in my views and header, I can change the record title, which is what we need to change here. So instead of having country ID, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to choose common name, and that's it. Save the changes here, go back into our create. So I'm gonna save, save the changes here. This might already have done the change. Let's see, no, I just need to test it out or even maybe refresh the page. Let's see, no, there we go. So now we have the full name of the country with the name here, awesome. okay. That's okay, but if we test out and if we look at our list of stores and I click on new store here, you know, that's better. We have the full name of the country here, but it's a bit too big for you know our liking here. We might want to have something like a smaller pop-up, which makes it a bit more modern and you know, just need a space of what you need, right? Not this whole, there's a bit too much white space here. So the way we can actually define the opening of the of the pop-up here and the size of the pop-up is to go into the definition of the record action. 
So here our record action is the new store record action. So I can go into my store record type and I'm already in my record actions tab here. I'm gonna go into new store and I'm just gonna go for dialog box, dialog box size small. There's a lot more stuff we can define here, the visibility, but we're gonna keep it simple here. I just need to do and say dialog box size. Click on okay, save the changes here. And then in my new store, I can click on, I just need to refresh. I'm gonna refresh this here. New store, this is already much better. So this is pretty much almost there, right? We just need to create the name and we're gonna test the process here. So if we go back to our list, we've modified the interface here and we want to now test the process model to see if that works. So I'm gonna add a new store. So let's say, uh, you know, we're gonna have a store in New York and that's gonna be in USA or United States. There we go, submit. And that already shows it up. Now, this is okay, but you know, we might want to have a bit of a different uh, view of list and we might want to simplify it and remove some of the things here. So we'll do that just after, but I just want to do that beforehand, add a couple more stores. So I'm gonna add Paris, so a Paris store, we're gonna add Berlin, Germany. Let's do Mexico City and Mexico. You can add a you know, few, few of those. Also, what we want to do is not to display just the code here. We want to also be displaying the full name. And you'll see that you know, the data fabric and all the features that we have makes it very, very convenient to just show directly the name. And without the features that I'm going to show, what you would have had to do, you know, without Data Fabric, is to collect all the countries in the database table and then create a view to be able to map um, the store with the name of the country. We're not going to do that. We're going to be doing something much, much simpler. Okay, so uh, we're going to be doing the last step here, which is to modify the record list, and that will happen in the store record type you'll see that a lot of stuff happens in the record type because it's a fundamental, it's a pillar object of all of our application. And so a lot of this is defined in our record types here. Okay, so let's go to edit the list here. And here, we're gonna modify a couple of things. So first of all, because here we don't have any data around created by, created on, which we could do, but you know we're not gonna do this here for the sake of simplicity. We're just gonna keep two columns, name and country. So let me modify and remove this column here by just hovering over the three dots. And now I can just remove that cross here. We would want uh, later on to do an enhance enhancement to be able to capture automatically the created on and created by. Uh, and that could be the topic of a next video uh, on how do you capture audit data. Right, so. Uh, and because we don't have any manager, I'm going to actually keep it here. Yeah, that's fine. Let's keep the manager. I'm just going to move it to the right hand side here. And I'm going to put this here by using this arrow to just move it below. That's got the manager here. Cool. <clears throat> now the country ID is cool, but we don't want to just have the country ID. We want to have the actual name of the country. Very simple to do. You'll see, I just need to go into country ID here into the grid column. And I'm gonna change the label to not be just country. I mean, just not be country ID, but just be just be the country. And now I'm gonna remove the sort field here. It's gonna be a bit of a different sort field. What I can do is I can select a field. Now I could select all the fields from the store, but what I can see here is that thanks to the relationship that I created before, and thanks to those data fabric concepts, I can now connect my country and I can get the name. And there we go, we got the full name of it, even though the data is not on the database table and it's not in a view, I can just select and connect this. Now I could go even further and have this be a record link to actually go and click on the view and open the view of the country. If we have like a report on the country to see all the stores of that country. For now, we're gonna keep it simple here. Let's just click okay, save the changes here. I'm going to go back into my list of stores. Always good to see how it is being displayed and, and, and experienced by the, by the, uh, the users. 
And I'm going to create a new store. And let's do a new store in Toronto, Canada. And now I should see exactly Canada appear here. And voila. There you have it. This is a small view on the power of Data Fabric and all the features that have been deployed in the past year. We're going to stop here for this use case. There's a lot more to be seen, and hopefully, we can show you more stuff in, in later videos. I hope you got value from this. Uh, if you have, just put them in the comments. If you have still questions in there, you know, about uh, record types, about Data Fabric, put them in the comments as well. If you want to, you know, if you want to see more of something that we saw in this video, uh, you know, just mention, hey, I'd love to have a video on this topic. Uh, we really want to hear your feedback. Um, really, I encourage you to follow along this tutorial if you haven't done it already. Uh, if you're just, you know, watching this here, just go back and, and do those steps because that's an essential part of being able to learn how to do that. Talk to your colleagues about those features if they're not aware of it, and just play and experiment with this, right? So feel free to expand on this use case build more. This is how you'll learn. Uh, and of course, subscribe to this channel because that, you know, will bring a lot more of those videos in the future. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.